tutorial, I'm going to show you how fast and easy it is using Key Creator Drafting to make a 2D drawing of this part shown here. We're going to start with the top corner of this triangular shaped part. To do that, we're going to go ahead and create a circle. The diameter is going to be one inch, and I simply place the circle on the screen. I'm going to need to create some reference geometry, a vertical line and a horizontal line. To distinguish that geometry from the rest of the blue geometry, I'm going to go ahead and change the color. Now I can go ahead and create the horizontal line at the center and also the vertical line at the center. That's the only reference geometry I need to create at this time, so I'm going to go ahead and change the color back to blue. We're going to start working on the left leg of that triangular piece. To do that, I need to create an angled line, and we're going to use this reference line I just created. I pick it at this end to help orient the angle. The value is going to be 30 degrees. You can see how that angle was oriented. Notice that as I try to place it at the center of the circle, it's snapping to the tangent. I'm going to filter with the center midpoint. Next, we're going to create the boss on the left hand side. To do that, I'm going to create the same size circle, but this time I'm going to use the along entity button to specifically put the circle along this line starting from that end see the length of that line. I'm going to type in the value I want of three inches and you can see that that circle was placed along that entity at three inches. Continuing with that side, I want a tangent line between these two circles. You see that it's not available under my context menu. So here I'm going to go ahead and use the ribbon interface under the curve function I have all my tangent line creation options. Select tangent to two entities, pick the tangent at the first entity, and then near the second entity. You can see a preview ahead of time. Just to finish this side off, let's go ahead and extend that line out to that circle. We're going to use a trim function called trim first. Select the line where I, uh, the side I want to trim in the entity I want to trim it to. We can now go ahead and mirror the left leg over to the right hand side. Using the uh, window selection from the right hand side, I automatically select anything that's inside or touching the window. Using move scale, I'm going to position my base point at the end of this reference line. Make sure you hit the copy. Highlight the vector that defines your mirror plane, and then go ahead and do a mirror. Now let's start working on the base of that triangular shape. I'm going to create some, again, reference geometry. So I'm changing my color. And this time, I'm going to use the sketch function to quickly draw a horizontal line center to center. Notice the values changing in my tooltip. I can also hit the tab key to go to various areas in the tooltip and type in values if I want. But here we're just going to go to the center. Now I need to make a parallel line. I select my line. Select offset distance, type in the value for my offset, and then simply select which side of that line I want to go parallel. That completes our reference geometry, so I'm setting the color back to blue. The base has an arc shape through it, basically tangent to these three entities. So I'm going to go to the ribbon, by my tangent options, and create a, a, a circle tangent to three entities. 
select the circles near the tangent areas notice that again it does do a preview and place the circle as you can see we got a full circle and we don't need a full circle all we're really interested in is just this portion of the arc so we're going to go ahead and trim a circle which is a special case requiring the trim double or a trim divide here we're going to use the trim double where I select the portion of the arc I want to keep and the two entities to trim against For all intents and purposes, we're done with the reference geometry, so let's go ahead and delete it. One way you can delete it is using the pre-selection, using the by type option, which allows you to filter either by entities, by uh, colors, by uh, width, line widths, etc., or any combination thereof. So let's just go ahead and pick anything that was orange. You can see it picked all four entities at once. Terminate the selection, and now I'm just going to go ahead and delete. We need to offset this arc. So I select the arc, find the offset distance. The distance is going to be half an inch. And again, just like with the line, I select which side to offset to. Now we're ready to go ahead and clean up the corner. Again, I'm going to use the trim to a, uh, around a circle using a double. Select the portion I want to keep and the two entity lines to trim against. Let's go ahead and start putting in fillets around the cutout. Let's go ahead and use the fillet function. We go ahead and enter the value that we want. And because of the quick trim and quick fillet, I don't have to select both lines if I'm within the right uh, distance of the cursor and the proper zoom. There may be times when I am not in that uh, condition and I won't get the preview that I'm looking for. No worries, just manually select the two entities. Let's go ahead and start working on the front view. To represent the boss, I need a rectangle or a square. Using the tooltip, you can get the information I need for the size of that square. It's a commonly used shape, so I'm going to go to the ribbon and use our rectangle function. With the rectangle, I can also control the placement by defining the control point. I will enter my X value and Y value for that shape. And you can see that it looks like it's going to be a perfect match. So let's go ahead and place it, and intentionally I'm placing it at off center. I'm doing this so I can show you how you can use dynamic move and scale. Again, window select the four lines, move scale function. Make sure you pick the correct control point. By picking the, the sphere, I can move it anywhere I want. By picking the vector and sliding only in that direction, I can snap to any location, but only along that vector. We're ready to go ahead and work on the middle piece, that thin web section. To do that, I'm going to go ahead and use the sketch function. I'll be using the offset to indicate where I want to start my sketch from. So I pick the corner and then enter the delta distances from that corner. I'm going to create a horizontal line, making sure I'm just past the halfway mark. Go ahead and enter the tab key to enter my length in the vertical direction and then go back and snap it back to the beginning. We now need a line to represent the cutout in the side view. I'm going to go ahead and create a vertical line. I'm going to go ahead and snap to the circle or the arc using the tab space key to find the correct snap position that I'm looking for which would be the quad. We're now ready to go ahead and do some cleaning up of the front view. I'm going to do some trimming. I'm going to be using the double and divide to clean up those lines. Double here to select what I want to keep between the two entities. And then the next one will be divide what I want to get rid of between two entities. I'm 
Next we're going to go ahead and, and make that a hidden line using the format. Go to the attributes and select the dash line. Now we're going to go ahead and use the trimming to position function to clean up the rest of the front view and make it ready for mirroring and copying. Select the end of the line you want to keep and then the position to snap it to. Repeat that for all the other ones. And now we're going to mirror the left side of the front view to the right side, very much like we did the top view. The last thing to do is put in the two counterboard holes. Using the ribbon interface mechanical, select a counterboard hole, the size of my hole, how I want to define the depth and the representation, in this case top. I'll use the back button to go back into the dialog for the counterboard hole and change my representation to side. Select the line defining my depth, snap the hole location and snap the orientation. Now we can go ahead and use the Format Painter, select a line to extract the attributes from, go to Home, Format Painter, and select the entities you want to have the same attributes. Another way to do this would be to go ahead and select all the lines you want changed, right mouse button, Context Menu, Format, and change it that way. And here is our completed 2D drawing.